Let the wailing and gnashing of teeth commence because once again, it's time to throw your brand new OLED monitor in the trash. That's right, current technology, yuck, never good enough. Time to sell everything you have and pull all-nighter shifts to blow all your money on new technology, whether you need it or not. But in all seriousness, guys, OLED monitors coming out next year, I think are going to be insane as they may have just fixed the biggest issues we have with OLED displays today, such as poor text quality and the choice between grainy matte slop or a clear gloss coating that unfortunately lights up magenta in a even somewhat bright room. What am I talking about? I'm talking about inkjet printed RGB OLED. Now, for two years in a row over at TCL's booth during CES, I've been shown and had hands-on time with their upcoming RGB-based inkjet printed 32-inch OLED monitors which are gonna be 4K by the way, and as we get closer to the release, my chubby is rocketing up like a bat out of hell. So today, let's do something a little different and analyze the footage that I've taken while we discuss what makes them so exciting. Now, the first year at CES that I saw these, I believe in 2022, they were showing me actually just their flat version of the monitor, and it was pretty dang impressive. In fact, the most impressive part about the one that they showed me, I believe was the fact that, well, it had a really, really clear gloss coating that did not light up magenta, allowing us to get the purest of pure blacks at the same time as the clarity that we get out of the glossy, well, quantum dot OLED coatings that we have today. So it seems like just the best of both worlds and the colors were fantastic because it's RGB, it does not have a white sub pixel. But guys, what makes this so exciting is take a look at this footage that I have from 2024 while we discuss the best parts, you know, aside from the coating, of course, about this new technology. Now, what is inkjet printing? Well, I'm not gonna go too far into it, but essentially it's a new way of actually producing the OLEDs, which should be, well, quite a bit more efficient and allow them to print, as far as I'm aware, larger sub-pixel structures and that is gonna allow them to push the brightness potentially higher. It's gonna allow them to potentially move to different sizes all the way from wearables to TVs in the future. And what makes this so, so exciting is RGB OLED. Now, I did not get a chance to take a look at the actual subpixel structure myself, and I'll be sure to do that the next time I see these. But what I want you guys to understand is if this does indeed, and everything that I've seen online so far does point to this potentially being the case, if this is red, green, blue in a line, that means the text clarity of these monitors as well as the contrast is gonna be a massive improvement over not only you know W OLED, but at least in the text clarity section, that should also be a massive improvement over even quantum.oled as quantum.oled is in a triangle arrangement. This would have far, far more clear text. And I do want you to look at this footage and just, just look how good the colors are. Look how crisp everything looks on this footage. It is absolutely insane. In fact, I wanna go ahead and go back, guys, to highlight once again how good the glossy coating on this is. Look at those blacks, they are pure, pure black. And then you just bang, get the TCL logo in the center. And then of course, yes, you are gonna see some reflections, but keep in mind, CES is a very, very bright environment. I don't expect these issues to be that severe in your actual, well, room that you would be using such a monitor. Now, it is also, in this case, no longer flat. It's a dome-shaped design, but whether or not it's gonna be a dome design or a flat, who knows by the time that they come out, which is sounding like could be in not too long, but we'll touch on that a little bit later in the video. Let's go ahead and go back to some of this footage that I've captured, and here you can see Yes, the colors are just absolutely wild on this technology. Everything is just popping off the screen. I mean, take a look at this still image right here, guys, of these fabrics. That is wild. That is the type of color you could only see otherwise on quantum.oled, but here it is on inkjet printed OLED. That is fantastic. I'm so glad to see that. 
But we also have to keep in mind, you know, well, first of all, they're probably gonna be boosting the colors a little bit in this footage that they're showing to make it a little bit more impressive. But we have to keep in mind, you know, what are the specs of this thing? Is it gonna be something that you're actually gonna wanna buy? And let's go back here to the specs that I actually have right in front of the display. Now, as you can see, we're still talking about 4K 120 Hertz, but I do believe that 120 Hertz will become 144 or 240 Hertz by the time we actually see it in, well, consumer devices. I don't see any reason why they would stick to 120 Hertz. So I would expect a minimum of 144 Hertz and I'll try and get confirmation on that soon for you guys, but Look here, they do have red, green, blue in the resolution. Again, I'll have to actually get subpixel photos to know for sure, but it's sounding like this could be the holy grail technology when it comes to contrast, as well as still retaining that really, really crisp text that you've come to know and love on LCD. But here's where things might be a little bit concerning. Look at those brightness numbers, 150 slash 500. What does that mean? Well, what they're talking about here, guys, I believe is the 100% and the peak brightness. So 150 nits in a 100% window is pretty low by today's standards. That's only the amount of brightness you would see on older WOLED panels and 500 nits for a peak is not impressive at all. However, and this is where things are gonna get crazy, guys, Apparently, according to some information that I've been seeing online, there have been some major, major advancements in this technology as they've moved over to something called E-Leap. And I'm gonna pull that up right now here, guys. As you can see, E-Leap stands for Environment Positive Lithography with maskless deposition, extreme long life, low power, and high luminance, any shape, patterning. What a fantastic name. You know, I, you know what? I think it's time for raises all around in the marketing team. That is just, that's good right there. Yeah, let's go with that. In any case, what does this actually mean? Well, according to them, according to JDI, which is gonna be the people creating these displays, it is allegedly going to be two times brighter than conventional OLED while actually having three times the lifetime. That is absolutely insane and a massive, massive step forward for inkjet printed OLED. This is incredible and could lead to some really, really, really exciting displays. Now we do see here that they are showing a non red, green, blue specific subpixel layout, which does have me a little bit worried, but of course, this could be in reference to specifically mobile devices and not monitors. I am expecting, but you know, I could be wrong, but I am expecting that it will be just regular red, green, blue on the monitors. Again, I will get photos next time I see it to make sure. But the most important thing here to see is the E-Leap subpixels are 60% larger than regular OLED. Because the inkjet printing gives them more resolution to print, as far as I'm aware, this allows them to print them larger and get brighter and have a longer lifespan because of the larger prints. So that's really, really impressive stuff. You can see here that after five years and 5,000 hours, it is still brighter than even one year on conventional OLED. That's really, really impressive stuff there. And hopefully this can just be continued to improve so these last years and years and years and years. But even the first generation of this stuff is looking insane. And here we can see that according to a What Hi-Fi article, apparently there's a new OLED panel manufacturer in town. Should LG and Samsung be worried? Oh my God. Yes, they should. They absolutely should because Apparently, quote, Japan Display has announced that its new E-Leap type of OLED panels will enter production by the end of 2024. And guys, speaking of release dates, I have been told that they were targeting 2025 for a release date for their 32 inch 4K panel. So if we get a 144 Hertz or 240 Hertz, 32 inch 4K RGB, inkjet printed E-Leap OLED panel, in 2025, this is going to be a huge, huge step forward for OLED technology in 2025. And I do expect to see more information at CES in 2025. So make sure that you are subscribed so you see that. By the way, did I say like 2022 and 2023 earlier? I 
probably meant 2023 and 2024 for CESs early, whatever, you get the point. I've seen it for a couple years. I'm gonna see it again. And this time I'm gonna get sub pixel shots to confirm or deny our worst fears or maybe potentially what we're looking forward to in terms of the sub pixel arrangement so that we can get an idea. Is this the holy grail of display technology? No, no, it's not. But it could be a display that is really, really good. I feel like we're right on the cusp. Like the OLED monitors this year are really good, but they just have enough problems where I could see someone maybe trying to wait for something like this coming out next year or upgrading their monitors that they have this year to that if it really does have these big, big improvements. Although of course, every year we will see improvements to display technology until we finally reach the real holy grail of micro LED in, well, by the time we're 2000 years old. Whether you're looking to connect a new console, gaming PC, or just need a fast and reliable HDMI cable to connect over long distances, Rupro has you covered with their certified 8K HDMI 2.1 fiber optic cable available in sizes of up to 50 feet and can deliver a perfect full 48 gigabits per second connection over distances other cables could only dream of reaching. And with 48 gigabits per second of bandwidth, it can easily drive 8K 60 FPS or 4K 144 FPS 10 bit HDR video through its ultra thin, flexible, and durable housing and it even supports ER. So if you're in the market for a cable that can drive a beautiful new TV or monitor, be sure to check out Rupro on Amazon today.